Hello and welcome to a video tutorial showing you how to create the digital leaderboard hourglasses in my Hogwarts gamification. Um, so I've gone through a whole series of videos to get us to this point and now we're finally going to build the, the virtual hourglasses that you might have uh, for your Hogwarts gamification. So if you're familiar with the Harry Potter series, um, as students uh, break rules or, or uh, uh, show what they know, they're awarded points uh, by the Hogwarts teachers, and those points go into a big, large hourglass uh, for each house. And at the end of the year, they're awarded the house cup, um, depending on which team ended up with the most points. So I'm going to do something similar in my uh, classroom. And uh, in order to keep track of all the points, I want the kids to be able to see at a glance who's in the lead. So to do that, I'm going to create a pivot table. Lots of pivot tables in this particular. Uh, in this particular app smash. So I'm going to go to data pivot table and it's going to have taken all the data from that first table, the, the raw data that I have um, being put in. And uh, let's start taking a look at what we want to do here. We want the sum of each points for each that for each house for the removal, but I'm also going to want the awarding of points like that. Now I'm going to start adding some other columns here. I want the house point or the houses again like that. And I want to create a formula that's going to show the differential. So I, I would like this uh, uh, leaderboard to be able to go into negative numbers. So let's take a look at what I need to do for the formula for this. I need to add the two numbers together, and if it's a negative number, I want that to show up. So I'm going to put in an equation here. I want, so I'm going to go into functions, and I'm going to press the sum button. I want the sum of the awarded points, and I want to take away the removed points. Let's see if that comes up correctly. There we go, we got negative five. And now I should just be able to copy and paste into each one of these. There we go. And it takes the, the numbers that belong. Um, so that's all I needed to do right there. I have my houses, I have where they're sitting currently in the points. So I have Gryffindor at negative five in last place and Slytherin at plus five in um, first place. Now what we need to do is we actually need to create our, um, our graph. So let me actually um, rename these house. So we got house and we got house points. There we go. Okay, now this time to make the graph, I'm going to select only the data that I want. I, I don't really care about the pivot table. It's just the data that I'm using from the pivot table that I want. So I'm going to have all that selected. Now I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go down the chart. So we're just going to wait till that comes up. All right, and it gave me this chart just like that with house points. And that's basically all you need. Um, the name of the chart right here isn't really what I want, so I can actually rename that to just call it house points. House point standings or something like that. And then we can do some customization. So for example, if I didn't want the legend, I'm pretty sure I can just um, get rid of it by clicking on the legend button and put none. There we are. And I like all the labels. Everything looks like it should be looking here. Um, maybe I can customize the colors. Let's take a look. I think that might be in series. Clicked on the wrong thing there. Yeah, and I won't be able to customize the colors. Um, if you're watching this video and you know how to customize those colors, I'd love to know. Um, because even the one that I have built for my students, this is just all dummy data. I haven't been able to customize the colors. What I ended up picking was I picked uh, purple because there is no house that's purple. And uh, But the kids have been asking, why, why isn't our Gryffindor red or Ravenclaw blue? And I, I don't really have a good answer for that. Um, the one thing I might do here is just change the graph to be a little cooler looking. So let's maybe pick a three-dimensional one. Um, I thought I had options for three-dimensional ones. Oh, well, it doesn't much matter. 
Um, that's all you really need to know in, in order to create a pivot table and along with the chart. Uh, so you can look back at another video where I actually showed how to uh, publish these. And uh, I put this right in into my digital leaderboard web page so that the students can check the web page whenever they want. And then all the data that I have is protected. They never get access to the data. They just gain access to the charts that are produced from the data. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.